In this tutorial, we're going to see the basics on how to use Twixter and HipFilm. You should start by watching our plugins and HipFilm tutorial to pick up some overall basic tips. First, we'll see some simple speed changes. We're going to start a new composition and we'll make the settings the same as our clip that we will use. In Twixter, we want to make sure the frame rate of our timeline, or output frame rate, is the same as our clip's input frame rate. We can choose a template for our timeline or choose custom. We made this 1280 by 720 and 59.94 frames per second. Also note that we can work an 8-bit integer or 16-bit float. We'll leave it on 8-bit for this. We can select Start Compositing. Now we're going to start with a simple slow motion effect. In this lesson, where the new duration has to become longer than the original, and since plugins aren't allowed to alter the duration of the source material, we can manually change the duration in the resulting composition setting in a pre-comp. Let's check out our original clip first. Now we can make a pre-comp of our media by right mouse clicking and selecting Composite from the pull-down menu. We can add pre-comp to the name. Here we can change the duration as I mentioned. If we know the exact duration that we want our new composition or resulting clip to be, we can enter that number now. We're going to just choose an arbitrary number that we know will be longer than our new duration for now. We can change that later. I'll make it 10 seconds. Now we can add this pre-comp to our composite. You can see that the new length is 10 seconds, and we can notice how the pre comped sequence is like a composition within another composition. We can name this composition Slow Mo. Now let's add Twixter to the padded pre comp that's now included inside the new composition we just created. We just go to the Effects tab and type Twixter, and then add it to the pre comp. So let's go ahead to the effect controls and look at the controls that we need for a simple slow-mo effect. In Twixter, the default settings for slowdown are pretty good, so we only need to be concerned with a few options. Let's look at the display. The source shows the footage before retiming with Twixter, and the Twixter output shows the time remap version. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on Twixter output. We can check the layer properties to make sure the frame rate matches the footage. It's 59.94, so that's good. Now we can choose the type of remapping we want, speed or frame number, and in this lesson we'll use speed. All we have to do is set the speed percentage. Let's consider what happens during a slowdown of a clip. If we know in advance that our 150 frame clip will be slowed down by 5, that would be a percentage of 20 and the result should be at least 750 frames. That's 100 divided by 5. Speaking of frames, let's change our time display to frame numbers by right mouse clicking here on the time code. A value of 50% would tell Twixter to play the clip half as fast as the original. We're going to make it two times slower, or half speed. So in the dialog box, I will type 50. We can shorten the clip to the new length simply by dragging the edge of the clip to the last good frame before it goes black. Now we can export the clip so we can check out the result. We will choose Slow Mo and choose Content Area so it only renders to the end of the clip. We can also double check the frame rate and then export. Okay, it's done. Let's import it and check it out. Now we're going to tell Twixter to change the speed of the shot for a speed up effect. Twixter does this by purging and or creating new frames based on motion and speed up factor. As a result, the footage is shorter. For example, a two second clip when made two times faster or 200% becomes a one second clip. Since we don't have to make this clip longer, we don't need a pre-comp. So we'll just make a composite with our clip and apply Twixter.
Now let's adjust the speed. We can call it speed up. In this case, since we want to speed the shot up, this is the way it works. If I choose to make it three times faster, that would be 300%. So if I put 300 in the speed dialog box, the source clip that was 150 frames long is now 50 frames long. Hmm, are you wondering why my last 100 frames are just red? That's because Twixter is not allowed to adjust the length of the final output clip. So it just makes the remaining frames of the clip red. We can just drag the clip to the last good frame and then we can export the clip. We choose speed up and choose content area so it only renders to the end of the clip. We can also double check the frame rate and then export. Let's import the result and take a look. Okay, so what if you want to ramp the speed so it starts out fast or real time, slows way down during the real action, and then speeds up again at the end? Let's see how we can do that. It's just by adding some keyframes. We can start with our pre comps since I'm not sure if we're going to make this longer than the original or not. Better to be safe than sorry. We can right mouse click on the pre comp and select properties. We can extend the duration of our pre comp to 10 seconds. And now we can make a new composition with our pre comp and call this speed ramp. Now we can go to the effects tab and add Twixter to our speed ramp composition. The speed ramping effect is accomplished by providing non-constant speed. This is easy to do in Twixter by keyframing values using one of these two methods, either by frame number or speed percentage. If we go to the effects controls, let's put the display on Twixter output. Note, we can turn on GPU support if we want to see increased processing speed. Now in our output control, Let's look at the time remap mode. We're going to choose frame number this time. In the previous lessons, we chose speed. Twixter considers the first frame to be frame zero. Also go ahead and select frames instead of time code for the display style. This way, the timeline will display frame numbers. With the frame number control, now we can keyframe the frame number parameter as follows. I can tick the toggle button to activate keyframing. I'm going to go to frame zero of the output. I will enter frame zero in the frame number dialog box. This causes Twixter to output the first frame of the source clip at the first frame of the output. The keyframe is set because we had previously selected the activated animation. I'm going to navigate to frame 86 of the output in the timeline. I will keyframe frame 76 in the frame number control. This causes Twixter to play back input frame 0 to 76 within the output frames 0 to 86. Now I'll navigate to output frame 149 in the timeline. I'll keyframe frame 90 in the frame number control. This causes Twixter to play back frames 76 to 90 within the output frames 87 to 149. Now I navigate to output frame 200 and I keyframe frame 149 in the frame number control. Input frames 90 to 149 will be played back within the output frames 149 to 200. If I play back a preview, I can see that the bottom looks like it's tearing a little. I'm going to use this handy feature called Smart Blend by checking the box. Now I can navigate to the three middle keyframes where most of the action is happening and change the interpolation of the keyframes by right mouse clicking and selecting interpolation and smooth to smooth out these transitions. Otherwise they're a little too jerky. We can drag the end of the timeline to our last frame which is now 200 and export the speed ramp to see the result. We choose speed ramp as our timeline, content area as the export area and double check that the output frames per second are correct and export. Now we can see our speed ramp results. Just to recap, these are the basic methods we use to do a simple slow-mo, speed up, and a speed ramp with Twixter and HipFilm.